okay. Um, it's easier for me to make um, a video about this than to uh, than to type this all out. So here goes. Could be a long one, but I think I'll just try to. I might make a few. I'm just gonna try to keep them short, shortish. Um, so separation, more on separation anxiety, um, dogs and kids, um, babies, bringing babies into a home, making sure they're safe with your dogs, your dogs are safe. Um, so it all goes hand in hand. And um, this stuff is going to be um, really helpful, not just for separation anxiety or for um, with kids, that especially, but all kinds of stuff like if you've got dogs that are reactive um, at the door and just go ballistic when someone comes over or even um, outside on the walk um, because that starts all starts with how your dogs are in the house um, so many things fear issues with dogs um, stuff this is gonna be um, it's all gonna be the same the same to start out with which is that place command um, so, and also this, let's see, so Sage is in her kennel, door is open, but that's, that's her place, I mean, she, she can be on, on the place beds too, but, um, she prefers it in there, and, and, uh, and that's good, but the, the thing is, is so, Keem comes in, goes to place, and he instantly, not instantly, but, um, you know, that's just his place of, of relaxation, calmness, safety, security, all that stuff. Um, same with Sage in her kennel. So the thing is, is that these guys like to hop up and follow me around, and they um, are taught not to. Um, now, if they just go and lay there by themselves or go in the kennel um, by themselves, that's fine, but... So say I'm gonna, I have a really small house, so I'm not walking from room to room, but if I was gonna go in a different room or say I'm gonna go outside, um, just because she put herself in the kennel and he put himself there, um, I'm gonna just reinforce that I want them to stay and not get up and follow me. So he won't hear me probably because he's asleep, but I'll just, you know, say Sage, kennel, Keem, place, just to reinforce, that's where I want them to stay so that I can um, come outside and do whatever, go to different rooms, and they don't jump up and, um, and follow me because that's what they would do most of the time. So, um, so teaching a good place command um, and, and or, you know, kenneling up, staying in the kennel, good. Um, and not following me around um, is going to be super, super important to practice that like all the time. So if I wanted them to come with me, I would call them with me. Um, but they're not, they're not um, just getting up and, and following me around and just creating more and more um, anxiety and stress and, in their mind. Um, needing to be near me. They just need to start to learn that chilling in their place, um, they're to they're, they can self-soothe themselves. They don't need to be codependent with me um, and, and that I'm controlling space. Um, so like the house or anywhere I go really, um, I'm controlling space. They're not just milling around, going here, doing that, doing whatever they want. Um, I want to be controlling the space. So I do that, and since they're sleeping, I can't really demonstrate that. Um, but basically using um, body language, spatial pressure, um, if we're moving through the house, um, I don't say, okay, so, sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, having, like I said, my house is really tiny, so I don't do this much in my house, except in the kitchen. So the kitchen's really good, bedroom's really good, whatever. Pick a place in your house that is like off limits to your dogs. Start enforcing that boundary. It's just a non-negotiable boundary. So say dogs aren't allowed in the kitchen. So just start enforcing that boundary consistently. You can use body language, spatial pressure to walk towards the dog, turn them around, make they can't come through this boundary. So 
it's just good it's good practice for them to have a, a place in the house that is off limits that there there's a boundary for them so that they just start to respect boundaries more in general um, and especially if you're gonna have a baby coming um, or a kid already that like okay they're that their room is off off limits and if it's a baby coming then it's like okay your bedroom wherever the baby's gonna be um, off limits and just start enforcing that boundary um, and controlling the space and you know dogs understand that really well um, they do it with each other if you have multiple dogs you probably notice this sometimes it's really subtle often it's really subtle um, but and sometimes it's really dramatic um, you can see how they move each other and control space especially like going in hallways or outdoors or just around, outside in the yard um, dogs are really really expert at um, controlling space and they can be real subtle about it but um, that's just so we have to just learn to kind of control space with our body language um, as well um, to get space they don't I don't want them coming into my personal space all the time uninvited um, and if we do it without thinking they come up and we pet them and um, I want them to come up to a respectful distance and and wait to be invited in to get to get affection or attention um, I want them to start respecting that boundary as well and not needing to be like right on me right next to me right you know um, in my in my personal space and so that's another thing with expecting a baby or having having small kids is that 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 boundary needs to be really clear that they don't just come into your personal space um, they they can wait you know po be polite and get invited in or not or not get invited in um, and if you have a little kid you want to really enforce that boundary for your child too because they can't enforce it for themselves so we want to really enforce when we have kids around enforce that our dogs don't just get up in their faces and get to we want to really like make it um, like that the kids are um, you know an absolute like off limits like you cannot just go rushing and then also we have to teach our kids or the kids that are around our dogs how to interact um, correctly with the dogs so they're not putting too much pressure on the dogs either so where'd Keen go oh he's he's moved over to the bed um, so I want to be really careful like I don't have any kids anymore in my house but I want I need my dogs to like be really good with kids I really need them to just be you know I need to be able to trust them around around kids because they they not that they've been around kids very much but they are sometimes so I have to be really um, controlling it when they are around kids and making sure they understand boundaries that's um, so Keem had um, Keem hasn't hardly been around kids at all um, and Sage has been around kids before but like all over them and of course they were like rough and tumble and love to play and so did she but um, she doesn't have she she's too she's too much she's really really friendly and would never intentionally hurt them but she's too crazy so you know the other day I had, was in town and Keem was on his leash we were in town and um, I was talking to a friend with three little kids and they wanted to pet him and he's not like rambunctious crazy but he's at their face level and he's all wanting to be in their face and lick them and you know just be too pushy and so it was a good opportunity for him to be learning some boundaries with them where he couldn't just get close to his face I like made him sit back a little bit and they could pet him and and um, interact with him but he couldn't um, you know be too pushy like they're not they're not like other dogs and puppies to get crazy and play with so um, so as the adult I'm monitoring him and controlling his energy with the kids and they're they're older kids you know like not two three years old they're older um, 
but so that he learns how to be respectful of kids and and space and then on the flip side I have to be super responsible on not on, on teaching kids to respect his space because it, it only can take one time of like a kid being too forward with a dog um, put too much pressure on a dog um, for a dog to like not like kids anymore to react to snap dogs you know that's who they are they're use their mouths and they feel too much pressure towards them um, they're gonna use their mouths they're growling is good it's a warning and the next step is bite you didn't listen to my growl now I'm gonna bite so I mean I don't want dogs growling either I would not allow that but um, but you have to you really have to teach kids that are gonna be if you're gonna have kids around your dog you have to teach them to respect your dog's space so the kennel and also place part of the deal with them going there when I tell them to and staying there is that that is a safe space for them. Like I'm, not, I'm gonna not, I'm gonna advocate for them and make sure nothing is gonna bother them while they're there. Um, so, so that just be diligent on that. Um, so anyway, I got a little off track. I was talking about separation anxiety, um, but it all it all goes hand in hand. Um, separation anxiety. Teach place. Don't let them follow you around the house. Um, place is really less of well it is it's a physical place but it's more of a, a mind mental space head space that that's where they go to be calm and be relaxed and to feel secure safe all that stuff just like the kennel um, and so not following you around the house place you know now like I don't really care in the beginning I was really strict about having to be on place like now I don't really care they can come in the house lay down wherever they want on the floor I don't care they just can't be in my space and they can't be following me around and doing monkey business but um, so after a while you I mean you can loose you loosen up after a while because they're making good choices on their own um, but in the beginning it's better to show them exactly what you want them to do um, so Anyway, okay, I'm going to end this and then I'm going to make another video um, on just um, babies, ba um, babies and dogs, you know, bringing babies home when you've got dogs and you want to make sure that you can keep it safe. All right.